And our second stop in today's China on the move is uh, the Tibet Autonomous Region in southwest China. Improving transportation infrastructure is a vital part of China's Western development strategy. And the Qinghai Tibet Railway is one of the symbols. As Zhang Lu finds out in Tibet, the road to heaven is now indeed becoming a road to prosperity. Railway. Destination Lhasa. This is the first railway to connect central Tibet to the outside world. Three years after its operation, the railway has played an increasingly crucial role in stimulating the region's economic development. Tourism is among the first industries to thrive. Unique things of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau can be seen along the railway line. Now the high altitude track provides more than just a mode of transportation. For many visitors, going to Lhasa by train has become an interesting facet of their Tibetan trip. Han Zhiqiang and Zhang Mingling are heading to Lhasa for the first time. They are impressed by the scenery and say the only drawback is that train won't stop for them to take pictures. The scenery along the railway is picturesque. It's really terrific. I think the route's design of the railway is very good. At the beginning, we thought of coming over by airplane. We were wise that we didn't. Convenient traffic is a basic guarantee for the development of tourism. The Qinghai Tibet Railway has broken the bottleneck. In the past three years, the railway has transported more than 8.3 million passengers. What they brought to Tibet is soaring tourism revenue, employment, and the development of related sectors, including hotels and catering. Smooth cargo flow ensured by the railway is also changing the economic fundamentals in Tibet. Nima is the head of Sirma village, which is near the railway line. He opened a logistics company after the railway went into operation. The railway helps in raising farmers' income, and our life has improved greatly. Nima now has more than 60 employees, all from his village. Their average income is about 1,200 yuan a month. Currently, the railway has become the most important mode of cargo transportation between Tibet and the inland areas. This all powder will be sent to Xining. Before, we relied on auto transportation only. Now, by railway, the transportation is cheaper and faster. The railway lowered transport costs by more than 60 percent. This has made Tibet's commodities competitive, saved more profits for local companies, and made daily necessities and durable goods cheaper. The railway has become an economic artery for Tibet, with an average GDP growth rate of more than 12 percent in the past two years. Tibet's economy is now right on track. I believe that our business will expand daily. The prospects are boundless. Based on successful experience, China approved two projects to extend the Qinghai Tibet Railway from Lhasa to Rukhuzhe and Ningchu. The extensions are to be completed by 2020. Many call the world's highest railway a road to heaven. However, the significance of the enormous project is far more than overcoming construction difficulties. Improving transportation infrastructure and expanding exchanges with inland areas are the foundation for developing Tibet's economy. Additional programs for progress should ensure that the road to heaven can lead locals to economic prosperity and a better life. Zhang Luo, CCTV, Tibet. On tomorrow's China on the Move, we visit Xinjiang's largest mosque, the Idgar, to explore changes in China's religious policies over the years. 
the mullah rethinks the meaning of harmony after the July riot in Urumqi. And for generations, people of the Hertha ethnic group relied on fishing as a way of life. But dwindling stocks forced them to seek other alternatives to sustain a living. Fishing used to be their only means of livelihood. Liu Yin tells us how the Hertha people are adapting to the changes.